Hey everyone, Flannel here. Today I'm going to be doing episode number four of my How to Win series. This episode is going to focus on observing your enemies and responding to what they do during fights to gain the upper hand. Before we start though, here's the top three contestants who participated in the giveaway. Uh, the winner received a NVIDIA skin bundle, so I hope you enjoyed that, and just want to say thank you again for 2,000 subscribers. You know, I only do these giveaways because I care about you guys, and uh, I'm really glad I can help you guys improve. So uh, let's just get right into the video. Stop wasting time. So again, as I said before, this video is going to focus on I'm not going to be playing flashy or fast. It's just about observing what my enemies do and trying to respond to that in a more effective way. So I'm only going to talk when it's worth talking. And if not, you're just going to hear the game. So right here, it's nothing to worry about with my drop. I don't do anything fancy. It's really just drop, try to find the nearest weapon before an enemy does. So I didn't really get a good weapon off the start, so I run to this building, Trump, and I just look for more weapons. I'm trying to become an effective player right now. So I get a pretty good load off, load out off the bat right here. So I decide to start chasing enemies right away because I don't really need to keep looting much, except for mats. So there is somebody above me, and I don't want to immediately go up the stairs because they could be waiting for me with the pump. And the sound in this game sucks. You just don't want to trust that and rely on it too much. So it's easier to just go out the outside and peek your windows to actually see where your opponent is. So I'm going to run that back a little bit to explain that scenario. So I start breaking this and I see him start sprinting towards me. So I know he's going to be around that pillar in the next few milliseconds. So I decide to take the shot. I don't hit for too big of damage, but it's okay because I immediately put a wall for uh, to, to stop his counter fire. And then he goes to take his map out, which is a good time to go for an edit shot. So I hit him for 95 right there. And since he's hurt, he decides to ramp over and run away, which is which is a good play. Uh, a bad play for me would have been chasing him up that stair because he could be waiting with the pump. So I don't do that. I kind of just take the L and try to find him another way. All right, so it's clear he went outside. I keep looking again, but I just can't quite get the angle on him. So I give up on that endeavor for now. But I hear a lot of shots coming from construction. Yeah. So I hear a lot of shots coming from construction. So I want to get in here and see what's going on. So I can grab some kills. Now I hear somebody outside here. So I use my right hand advantage to take some free shots on them. Now it's really hectic with all the sounds going on right now. So I, I need some more visual to actually understand what's happening. So I break out the side over here to look around. And because of that, I get a free kill because that guy was already pressured. So hold on. I'm... Wait. Alright, so now I'm going to run it back. And uh, I'm going to go back to this kill right here. So, when I break this wall, I immediately notice that that guy's in a box because somebody on the other side of that uh, that little building is shooting at him. So I think it's a pretty good opportunity to just shoot right through the wall. He won't be expecting it, and it's a free kill right there. At this point, I'm trying to figure out. I hear a lot more footsteps, so I'm trying to just see where these people are. I see someone ramp above me. That's one, and then I hear somebody shooting at him, so that's two. And because I heard him, I was able to get him while he was distracted by the other guy. And now I only have this guy above me to deal with.
All right, so I think the heat died down a little bit, so I'll just go over that quick play real quick. So again, he's he's trying to be aggressive and spam me out. So my I have a deagle, so I, I went for the headshot to finish him off in one bullet. Didn't kill him, but it definitely shut him up, which is a really effective strategy to get people to stop spamming you. So now there's a plane approaching, and again, I'm just observing. I'm trying to see what's going on to get a good play going. So I know that guy's still on top of construction, so I, I'm going through Trump to try to just get the elevation I need to get over on top of him. I still hear him below me, so this is this is good uh, scenario for me, because now I have the top down on him, and I can just find him. Alright, now I know he's going to heal. There's not really much to explain there, he just made a, a, a bad error. He decided to start healing, which gives off a noise, while I already knew where he was. So, all it took was an edit kill while he was healing to kill him. But again, we won that fight there. It, it's good to take note that I went through Trump to get the elevation I needed instead of ramping up to him so he'd know where I was coming from. It could have ended much differently. So there, there was a guy that just ramped above Trump. Just want to note that since I was talking. That's a good one to go over. So I end up being at this window because I hear him around and right hand advantage along with the window allows me to see where he might be a little better. And I do discover him. So when I see him, I want to deagle him, I miss, and then I try to make the play where you deagle the wall and then shoot him with a shotgun and it ends up working, but he ends up throwing a chiller grenade at the same time. So I get that 47 off, and then he chillers my feet. And a lot of players here would choke because, like, ah, oh, shit, I have chiller, like, uh, like I'm, I'm slipping around and everything, and they start freaking out. See, what I did was I try to block off his entrance, and I try to back up so he can't get an easy shot on me. And then I start building walls around me so that I can take control of the scenario. And then I see him running this way quick, and I thought he was going to come around this corner, so I pre-fired. But uh, it didn't work out, and then I immediately cover myself with the wall here so he can't take advantage of my missed shot. And then he thinks he could W-key uh, -key me, and that just doesn't work out for him because I anticipate it, and then I ready my shotgun up for a headshot.
Alright, so I'm gonna run that back to explain a little bit of parts I did there. So right here, I see this guy. And I just build a stair and I peek over the side just to see what he's gonna do. Now he builds up really fast, so I just cover my top so that he can't really do anything with that high ground. And then I wait to see what else he does to see if he makes a mistake. So I block him off so he can't run up to me. And then I observe what he's going to do behind that wall. Since I can see him through that wall, I know he's going to run right across to the outside. And then that gives me a free hundred hit on his head just because I observed what the enemy was doing. Which is a pretty good point. Like, I feel like that's a good thing to take from this video. Free shots like that exist. And I, I can continue the same game. I just wait for him to do something to make a mistake. So I see he dropped down here. I take this opportunity to try to get a quick edit shot. Doesn't work out because he plays the pyramid. And so I wait for another opportunity. So at this point, uh, he was on top of me for too long, so I decided I'm just going to try to take a quick shot off the side like uh, to be a little unexpected. So I take the shot. It's a low shot, and I notice he's sprinting towards me as if he's going to jump off. So I unedit the wall, and since I just unedited it, I feel like most players like will see an unedit and think you're going to stay in your box. So what I did here was I just made a quick window edit right after I closed it to... Uh, uh, shoot him unexpectedly and it works out I mean this, I, uh, I would just like to say, I like shooting at planes, it's funny. I like when they blow up because it does a lot of damage to them. I don't know how that shot missed, but I just continue pursuing him because I know he's a little weaker than he should be. So there's not much to explain there. He just ran like a chicken without a head on the floor, and that's perfect opportunity for just easy Tifu classics. You just jump over them and then place floors as you're taking headshots. So my game plan at this point is to just well, farm a little bit of materials and make my way towards the quad crashes on the mountain to my left. Let's <laughs> go. 
So instead of the quad crashes, I find these two guys. that back so I start the fight by immediately doing my other tactic I place a stair I wait for them to do what they do and I tried spraying him through oh, sorry I didn't go back enough all right so I started spraying him through trying to get a shot off but balloon guy took care of him for me so I ramp up now I go to take a shot on balloon guy but hit him for only 17 which kind of was weird but anyway I establish some high ground, and I just look for where he is. Missed a shot, but just keeping careful tabs on what he's doing. So I hear the dynamite, and I see him go downwards, so I go the same way he does, but with right hand advantage with the stair. Now, I saw he had a pump out, and I didn't have enough time to take my pump out, so I decided to just shoot him once with my assault rifle, and then place a wall, because, you know, some damage is better than no damage. And that broke, and he was kind of thrown off by that, so I was able to get a free shot while he was jumping. So, I, I'm not really, I don't need to rewind this. It's basically, when you're versing planes, the best strategy is to just build, move to their side, and then take shots when they fly past you. That pretty much always works for me. And this poor dude gets headshot out of the sky as soon as his plane breaks. Alright. So just to see what happened here, what mistake he made. So he fires at me, right? And that, I immediately just build up and then wait for him to do something stupid. I, I take a few shots. I build a little bit further up and then just wait. Make, make him force a move. And his move was to launch pad, which didn't end well for him. I was able to just pick him out of the sky before he was able to do anything. And you'd be surprised on how much that happens if you just wait for an enemy to make a mistake, how often they do make one. Some guy's shooting at me. I, I don't really know where he is yet, so I pick up this sniper and hope. So I didn't quite get the shot I wanted on him, so I just move on to a better spot in the circle. All 
Alright, nothing much to be said about that one. It's just like, I came up behind him and I just put a lot of pressure on with the beagle. Kept breaking his walls, kept trying to shoot him through. And uh, he ended up just not really covering himself effectively, which led to his death. Now, from this point on in the in the game, I don't get any more kills, but y you'll see why. And But there's still a lot of decision-making that allows me to win the game anyway throughout this, so I'll keep explaining. So, the, the mountain's the strongest point on the map right now, so I want to get up there. And I know there could be people behind me, so what I like doing is zigzagging up while I do this so that they can't really get a perfect shot on me. And yeah, see, I already have someone that was trying to shoot out my things, so it was a good precaution to take. There's a fight over here. I don't want to get too into it too fast. I want to make sure when I do get into this fight, I can make an effective play, so I observe first. And I notice he's down there. Alright, so I'll checkpoint it right here because this fight's going to be a little long. See, I want to highlight the fact that... I, so, I wanted to make a play. My play was I was going to run behind him, break uh, break the wall with the deagle, and then try to headshot him before he noticed what was going on. And the mistake I made was... The wall that I shot at, I happened to shoot one pixel off, and I broke the wrong, wrong wall. <laughs> so that sucked. And then he knew where I was coming from, and then I didn't quite get the shot off in time. So, instead of trying to keep forcing that play to happen, I just try to take the high ground route. And run up his own builds to save mats and get a better position. So, he's trying to do the same thing by building up, and I see that. So, I block off his shots, I go for an edit kill quick, but he's smart and he blocks my shot just in time. And this is the point where I start getting shot from the other side, so I flick, place a stair over there, and then I just decide to just, like establish my position over here to stay safe, to see what's going on. So I just want to run back a few key things I did there because I felt like this was a little important right when this happens. Where does it happen? Somebody ends up breaking this down. Yeah. Our so this breaks down, and I notice that, and I catch myself by connecting to the uh, the structure that was not breaking. And I felt like that was key to not losing a significant amount of damage. And then I end up breaking that tree to provide myself with more visibility on that guy. So he feels less aggressive. So uh, that's pretty much it for that part. I'll go back to where we were. Alright, so I catch myself again. And we're back in it. He launch pads away, and since he's vulnerable, I just take some shots. I notice he's trying to build up, so I just try to stop that. Uh, 
and foolishly I forgot about him in the back and I got sniped in the back. So I'll, I regretted that decision. And since I remembered he was sniping, I decided to do the same thing I was doing before, shooting him while he was glidering, but peeking a little bit so I wouldn't get sniped by the other guy that was possibly waiting for me. And since he flew to that fight, I realized since I'm the last person to launch pad, I'm like uh, the person that they forgot about. So I, I take the dominant position and I try to observe what's going on. One of them died, so now it's just me versus this guy and whoever does better here wins. That deagle pressure made him jump down and yeah, that didn't work out for him. So now I'm feeling good. I did, just did significant amount of damage to him, so but I still need to play safe. I don't want to throw this game and it, it's easily it's easy to throw a game that you think is in the bag. So he makes a good play, moves to a better storm position. And I need to follow suit, or else I'm going to be in the storm. So I do the same thing he does. And I try to make sure, since he's at that campfire, not giving him a shot, and then building up. Alright, a lot happened right there, and this is a highlight of making mistakes, because this 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 whole encounter I had, I made a ton of mistakes. But uh, I recovered from them, which is the important part. So, I jumped down here, and I think he's gonna make that run play, because he placed that uh, ramp, I aim for it, I'm waiting for it, and then he doesn't do it. So I decided to go for the edit play, but... What is unusual about the position I'm in right now is I'm on a I'm on a stair right here like um, and it it's inclining me up a little bit. So normally I do this edit and jump, but my muscle memory made me do it again. Meanwhile, I didn't have to jump. So when I did this, I kind of just completely exposed myself and then slightly missed the shot. So I took a lot of damage from that mistake and I try to build up so that he can't capitalize on it. And then I end up Harry Pottering myself and then I choke this edit right here. So, instead of completely panicking because of all the mistakes I just made, I just decide to go for the next play. So, I try the edit again, I succeed, and I see there's a ramp, so I go for the pyramid and trap kill. Now, it doesn't work out, but it definitely keeps him on his toes because instead of making all those mistakes, now he's like, oh shit, I'm about to get trap killed. So, he has to move away from that, and I'm not his biggest threat at this second anymore. Then I use that opportunity to try to get above him. The fact that I didn't hit him once here just makes me mad. <laughs> so he's doing a good job, like he knows that I need to move from the storm and he's trying to pressure me. And he's doing a really good job of it because this is a little awkward spot to build in. So I hug the right side because I know he's going to have to come this way, at least a little bit. And I see him ramping up towards me, so I ramp up as well. And that's it, really. Basically, what I ended up doing was I knew he had to come towards me. So I ramp up towards him. He breaks me down, but now I can just keep building and, like, I kind of just kept trying to keep him in the storm and uh, make sure I wasn't in the storm. And that ends up killing him in itself. So I didn't end up getting the kill, but I pretty much forced him into the storm there. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what I was going for for this episode. I didn't play super flashy. I, I, I tried to just work off of what enemies did. And uh, I recommend... You guys try the same thing. If you try doing this more, I feel like you can definitely directly improve on game sense. Because when you make a mistake, you'll know that, okay, it was my thought process, not like my button clicks. So uh, I hope you can take something from that. And um, 
yeah, hope you enjoyed the episode. See you next time.